No, David, then why on a, a prima facie level, since this seems like a neat explanation of a troubling problem and many of the familiar puzzles related to wave function collapse, why does this seem like an implausible view for you? Uh, so, I, I mean, the, you know, there, there are a bunch of things um, um, that are hard to get one's head around here, but but the the concern that most of the discussion has centered around um, is something that can be brought up very simply. Um, um, what we're used to quantum mechanics giving us um, before every, what, what we're used to old fashioned quantum mechanics giving us are probabilities for the outcomes of experiments. Okay. And if somebody asks us why we believe quantum mechanics or anything like quantum mechanics, what we're going to cite are, are, um, you know, what we're going to point them to is the fact that the frequencies of certain kinds of experiments, which we've repeated many, many times are in good accord amount to a good statistical fit with the probabilities for the outcomes of these experiments that quantum mechanics gives us. Okay. And, um, so we'd better have a way, it's not going to be an option for us simply to stop talking about those probabilities or something like that. If we want to have a story about why we believe quantum mechanics and what it is that quantum, we think quantum mechanics explains and what it is that we think confirms quantum mechanics in our, in our empirical experience, we're going to be talking about things like probabilities. Okay. So we're going to need on any, on any way of understanding quantum mechanics, that's going to be that's going to be a contender we're going to need some way of understanding what this probabilistic talk is about okay on old fashioned interpretations of quantum mechanics it's about the the stuff that probabilistic talk is usually about well the world is indeterministic sometimes things happen this way sometimes things happen that way the probabilities give you information about the frequencies that you should expect and about which frequencies are going to count as confirmatory of the quantum mechanical claims and which frequencies are going to count as disconfirming get disconfirmatory of the quantum mechanical claims and very very simply um um What's puzzling prima facie about Everett's picture is that it's completely deterministic, okay? Um, um, the Schrodinger equation is a deterministic equation. We get these predictions that what happens when I do a measurement is exactly this splitting, okay? Moreover, um, it's not just that it's completely deterministic. For example, classical mechanics is completely deterministic, and yet we speak of probabilities all the time in, in the context of classical mechanics. In statistical mechanics, we talk about probability distributions over initial conditions and so on and so forth. But in those cases, what gives the probability a chance to enter into the game in a coherent way is the fact that in the classical statistical mechanical case, we are usually ignorant of the microscopic details of the initial condition of the system that we're interested in. And we're very crudely speaking, I mean, we'll probably want to go into this in more detail later if we talk about foundations of statistical mechanics, but very crudely speaking, the probability talk is there to fill out our ignorance of the situation. That's also clearly not what's going on in the Everett case, okay? Um, um, in the Everett case, even in cases where nothing relevant to the future develop to the parts of the future development of the system that we're interested in isn't known to us, we still have these we, we still have these probabilistic things that the theory is giving us. And here, if you know those relevant things, you're simply not in any doubt about what any relevant feature of the future physical history of the world is going to look like. 
Okay. So, um, um, so the the initial puzzlement, the the sort of initial observation that gives rise to what has turned out to be a very long and very interesting and and circuitous and complicated and baroque discussion of the so-called problem of probabilities in Everett is this very simple observation. Where is there room for probabilistic talk here? What could this probabilistic talk possibly even be about? Okay. The theory, you know, if, if you consider an experimenter about to measure the Z, Z component of the spin of an electron whose X spin is definite, there's just nothing relevant about the future physical history of the world of which that observer will not be fully aware before she even carries out the experiment. There will be exactly one branch in which the Z-spin is up. There'll be exactly one branch in which the Z-spin is down. There will be an observer, for sure, who sees the Z-spin up. There will be an observer, for sure, who sees the Z-spin down. That's it, okay? Um, it strikes one, so, uh, to, to ask under those circumstances, What's the probability that I'm going to see Z spin up? Feels like you're asking, you're looking at an amoeba that's about to divide, okay? And you say to the amoeba, what do, they think, what do you think the chances are that you're going to end up on the left, okay? Or what do you think the chances are that you're going to end up on the right? The amoeba says, I, I don't even know what this talk means. Um, um, first of all, there's a kind of semantical question um, I don't even know if the if the I that we're talking about here is something that survives this splitting process, okay? And even if it does, talk about chances here just seems out of place. I know for sure that there's going to be a half an amoeba on the left and there's going to be a half an amoeba on the right, okay? And there doesn't seem like any room. It doesn't seem like there's any room in a situation like this to be talking about chances. Now, mind you, and Sean will have a lot to say about this and is one of the major investigators who's, who's produced a lot of what there is to say about this. This is the very beginning of the conversation, okay? This is a way of raising the question, okay? There, since the question was raised, there have been many, many enormously interesting, enormously clever um, attempt to say what there might what what probabilistic talk might be about given this deterministic constraint. But it's easy in this way at least to see, I think, why a question arises, why a worry initially arises. Yeah. Sean, I want to ask you about um, your work on self-locating uncertainty and, and the Born rule, but really quickly, just in a in a sentence, I guess. My guess is you like the determinism of the many worlds theory. And for you, it's a it's a feature, not a bug. The universe doesn't care whether I like it or not. <laughs> and I'm, I'm pleased that it's deterministic, but if it had been indeterministic, I would have lived with that. Mm -hmm. But so, yeah, um, the relationship between objective and subjective probabilities in QM is quite involved. But I have the understanding that you think many worlds offers a particularly neat way of explaining probability. So enter self-locating uncertainty and the Born rule. Yeah, I think actually, you know, uh, uh, as a philosophical stance, I think that the opinions of the founders of a field should be irrelevant because we should move on from them. But again, I was fascinated to to read in in the Everett biography. He had all this like right there from the start. He often, you know, one of the titles of his thesis along the way was quantum mechanics without probability. He had started his grad career interested in game theory and information theory and probability theory. It was only, you know, in his second or third year that he moved into physics. And that's why he was so excited about it, because you could explain the apparent location of probability in quantum mechanics as a purely subjective thing, not as something that was based on frequencies. So uh, David, everything that David said was right. He's very careful to say true things. I do not disagree. But I think that th there's one little lacuna in the story that he told, which is that there, even though 
he was very careful to say, there is nothing about the future development of the universe that is uncertain if we know the entire wave function. There are other kinds of uncertainty that are pretty relevant, and that's what's, what's been recognized by Everettians since Everett. It, one, the way that I like to put it, uh, following work I did with Chip Siebens at, at Caltech, is uh, in terms of self-locating uncertainty. But if you think about that experimenter who's going to measure spin up or spin down along the z-axis, and they know with 100% certainty there will be a version of them that sees spin up and a version of them that sees spin down, all true. But there will also be a moment in the history of those two future selves where neither one of them knows whether they're on the spin up branch of the wave function or the spin down branch of the wave function. That's where the subjective uncertainty comes in. And I think that there's kind of two steps to recovering the ordinary understanding of the Born rule, which is the probability rule in quantum mechanics, probabilities of the wave function squared, et cetera, and fitting all that in. One is just answering the question David asked, which is, why are there probabilities at all? And I think that's very clear. I, I think I just gave you the answer. There will be a moment when you don't know where you are, and you need to put a probability on being on one branch or the other, or if you like, a credence, if you want to call it that. The other one is, is it sensible or necessary or advisable to use the Born rule when assigning those probabilities or credences? And there, you know, there, there's two things. Number one, if you didn't want to be ornery, <laughs> if you just wanted to follow your nose and do the obvious thing, the answer is obviously yes. The Born rule is obviously the right way to assign probabilities. It's just Pythagoras' theorem. It's very, very natural. It's a set of numbers between zero and one that add up to one and are conserved over time, satisfying the axioms of probability, etc. But number two, you can try to be more sophisticated and try to make an argument why it is the uniquely rational thing to do. And that's where things get tricky. So I personally think I agree with Everettian critics that this is the single biggest worry about Everett, getting the probability rule right, getting the origin of probability and the actual rule right. But I... but. I think we've done it. I think we know what the answer is. I think that what is actually happening here is that it is truly a unique problem. In any other case where you're interested in probabilities or frequencies or whatever, in some sense, you can just count, right? You can just count the number of spin of uh, heads versus tails in the flipping of a coin or so, or the number of times that a spin is up or spin is down. And it's a different kind of thing you're doing in Everettian quantum mechanics, especially when the probabilities are not equal. When the wave function is the square root of one third spin up plus the square root of one third spin down, in a very real sense, there are two branches after you make that measurement. And you're trying to tell me I should act as if there's a one third probability that I'm on one branch and a two thirds probability I'm on the other branch. So whatever it is we're doing, it's not counting in the most straightforward sense. There are ways you can make it counting, but it, it's not quite straightforward. So uh, I do think that the you know the single biggest worry about Everett for me is not that I don't know where the probability rule comes from. It's that we're on sort of metaphysically shaky ground here. We are introducing ideas. We know what answer we want to get, right? We want to get the Born rule. And it's always easy to convince yourself that you've gotten the right answer for not necessarily the right reason. So I'm sympathetic to people who are like, you're really asking a lot of our abilities to reason uh, for us to accept this. But but again, I think that it's doable and I think that it's the right answer. And it, there's, to me, so much more that is attractive about Everett in terms of physics that I am willing to say that, yes, we have to get our philosophy better to really um, understand where all this is coming from.